All right, Batavia, do you watch Marvel stuff at all? Rarely. Okay. Well, if you haven't, and some people have, some people don't, but bottom line is She-Hulk is a terrible show. But my question (laughs) for you is, why is the Incredible Hulk such a good gardener? I don't know why. Because he's got green fingers. Ha! All right, we're going to talk about expanding your garden without actually expanding right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. All right, we got to have a talk, everybody. As you know, this is a listener-supported show, and right now we're literally running out of chewing gum to keep our mic- microphones from falling down. So if you want to help support us and help us buy some more chewing gum, please check us out on Patreon. It's at Backyard Gardens. You get an extra episodes a month. You will get an opportunity to win a one-on-one conversation with Batavia and myself where you can talk about whatever you would like. And, or... You can buy t-shirts and all that stuff. Links are below or just subscribe to us on YouTube. But just know that the proceeds will go to buy more chewing gum to keep our mics from falling down. <clears throat> Serious equipment <laughs> failures today, but that's quite all right. Um, if you guys think that I am maybe a little bit more reserved in my discussion today, it's because I basically have to sit here an hour without moving <laughs> for fear of a complete breakdown in all things podcasting equipment. We'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Incredible Hulk. I mean, he's a great gardener. What can I say? Them big old sausage green fingers. He's got it going on, baby. I'm glad we already uh, covered off on corn last week. Yes, we're going to continue the corn because I found a (laughs) gang of terrible gardening jokes that I will share with our listeners. So (laughs) there is that. And some of them may or may not have something to do with what we're talking about, but they're just irresistible. Good old we dad do have jokes. the explicit label on the, the episode, so just in case they get naughty. Yeah, these seem to be pretty clear that I've got my hands on. <clears throat> I wish I was clever enough to figure them out, but I'm, I'm just not. I'm not. <laughs> but um, so we're, we're doing this discussion about I can get more out of my garden. Um, working title for the series. Don't know if that's going to be the final, whatever. Um, but we want to talk about getting more out of your garden without really expanding your garden footprint because it's not deaf to my ears or Batavia's that not everybody can just go out and expand their garden to no end until they create this fact, this food home farm, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I was talking to um, a very good girlfriend of mine. Hi, very good girlfriend. I said, hi, very good girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm not sure if she actually... She did ask, like, how did you meet that guy? <laughs> Fate. <laughs> that guy being you, <laughs> I know right? who you're talking about. Uh, I get so that guy a lot. I did an in-person garden tour. I mean, we grew up together, so we go back. And I don't think she's actually seen the garden in person, you know, especially these last four years where it's been, like, you know, the epicenter of all things that are growing in Chicago, right? Um, and... She had her phone out and she was taking notes and she's like, all right, okay, okay, all right. When I see the videos online under Be Better Garden, when I see the videos online, I feel like there's this like, okay, where can I start? I being her, you know, because this seems to be a a bit um, advanced, right? You know, so if this was Microsoft, what's the uh, beginner level? (laughs) Um, And it's funny because for my garden to be where it is now, it's, it's gone through expansion over expansion over expansion, right? You know, um, and obviously there's been a lot in between that, but I look now and say, I'm on the quest to get more out of my garden and I don't have any intentions on expanding, Yeah, you know? I don't want to dig another hole unless it's for bodies. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to erect any more two by fours and I don't want to do any of that. Right. You know, so how can with what I have, which now I want to try to put my place myself in the place of anyone with what I have. How can I get more? How can I get the most? How can I get the best out of my garden? Yeah. And I I don't want the listener to trip 
because by design, we will revisit briefly previous episodes in the series because that's what this is about. So, you know, we will talk about that a little bit, but we're going to expand. You like that, didn't you? Expand (laughs) on that a little bit more because I'm the same as you. Like I did um, when I started this garden, I started with one bed, then I went to four and then I put up a greenhouse, then I put up another bed, then I added a whole another set of beds. And at some point it's like, all right, look, this is costing me a lot of money and time. And quite honestly, with with the really fast expansion, there's a struggle period that comes along with maintaining all that. And that's the quiet thing. What is that thing you said? The, the quiet thing. Say the quiet part out yeah, loud. Yeah, that's the quiet yeah. part out loud. You know what I mean? Is like, look, I'm so old. I don't even know these things. It's crazy. I'm not even that well, old. The I next promise. Thing is- <laughs> Hold on. Look, look. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm still getting Hold over on, this brother. COVID. You're going to make me cough, though. Yeah, wait, because <laughs> I am swimming in aphids, and as soon as I get past them, I'm swimming through the struggle yeah. of expansion. Um, no, I mean, truer words haven't been haven't sp- been spoken here. Um, they have been spoken, more, but just not as often. Uh, okay. More, more isn't always the f- it's not like, you know, do not pass, <clears throat> go and collect your $200, right? Yeah. Um, and we've talked about this before. And we've literally had series on expanding your garden. Check those out if you're interested. Um, it comes at a cost and not necessarily just monetarily, you know. Um, I don't want to say it comes at a cost. I want to say it comes at a setback. Because it's like, you, you know, so for instance, in my house, when I garden, I'm the only one that maintains the garden. You know, young David helps me. Um, The wife, she could care less. She likes looking at it and she likes walking by it, but she doesn't really go out unless I'm like, hey, go do this task, which I'm not like out there with a shovel in my hand like, woman. Get out there and get on the garden. I'm not like that, but with some straw in your 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 mouth. Damn man. right. But um, you know, so with that said, there's like there's going to be a setback because you've got to, like you said, if you get aphids here, now you've got more places for these things to be. So I don't want to. I don't really say a cost. I say it's more of a setback because for me, it's the the end goal is what I envision. Yeah, I don't speak in that way, but I absolutely do agree. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, my first descriptor wouldn't be, okay, you're going to experience a setback. But I I think it's true, right? And so I don't want to try to sugarcoat it. It's just kind of the way that I pull together. My words are a bit different than yours. Um, And it is a a bit more, trying to take a bit more softer softer of a tone, but keeping it really, really real, son. You know, (laughs) that's exactly, if I look back, I do feel like there has been a bit of a setback for me in my space. Not every single expansion equals that, right? You know, um, because an expansion could just be I'm only growing, you know, um, peppers and I just need, you know, another 50 square feet to grow peppers. Again, you'll experience something. I'm going to still lean more into that. You know, it's going to come at a cost, but you're not kind of flipping your garden experience. You're just basically like, I got another 50 square feet of peppers. Yeah. You know, um, sure, there are things like you need to water more. So a setback could be, oh, you really didn't account for that. You know, but when you start to say, I'm expanding the space, I'm expanding the types of things I'm growing, I'm expanding the methods that I'm growing, you know, be conscious of it. Now, there's, you're going to get over the hump. Oh, yeah. Right. If you stick it, if you stick with it, but that hump is definitely there. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, That's why at this point in my garden, I am at the stage where it's like, I don't want to expand, but I want to get more out of it. Mm -hmm. So I need to get smart about what I do. You know, um, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like investing, you know, it's like when you just add garden beds and add garden beds and add garden beds and bam, 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 bam. It's, you know, it's equivalent to being like dumb money where you're just not really like being smart about how you're planting and what you're planting. But I don't, I'm not calling you dumb. Please don't think I'm calling anybody dumb, but it's just like you, we don't know 
exactly what we're doing and what we want to grow. And that's where, like, in the last episode where we were talking, you know, and even earlier in the year when we were talking about, like, make a plan, know Mm -hmm. what you want to grow. It's different for everybody. Like, you can interject all these different things in there. So, for instance, I really hope my mom's not going to listen to this. She usually doesn't. She started a garden this year. She didn't, spoiler alert, she didn't put one trellis in. She didn't, you know, but she wants to grow those things. So what is she going to do? She's going to add more gardens instead of modifying what she's putting in this year to grow. And I'm like, mom, you don't need to do that, you know? And I was like explaining to her like the way the sun hit, you know, I wasn't trying to get like overly technical, but I'm like, mom, you can put a trellis here and you're not taking up any more space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because those plants are going to go up, you know, the, and so that I guess we can dive right into vertical gardening is a kind of a no brainer portion for this, you know, is by doing that, she may be taking up a square foot for each plant, if that, but they're going to go up. So the actual foliage and plants not going to take up a lot of space in her garden. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. And I think the th- the concept is right on. It's a way to get more because if you think about, um, I grew beans vertically, green beans, pole beans, and I grew them in about, I'm going to call it, I mentioned this last episode, a 36 inch round bed. That's where they're planted, but they sprawled all out. Right. You know, but they still, I was able to like, they ended up climbing onto the, the porch. Yeah. Right. So there wasn't a hole and they ended up connecting to a sunflower that I had sitting in a container next to it kind of accidentally. So that's still that space is still being occupied, but up and I'm able to grow sweet potatoes underneath it. Right. So that same space, if I would have tried to grow green beans, I mean, they would have been all out in the yard. It would have taken that entire kind of surface of the bed as well, because you'd have had the vines covering everything. Um, So that's an example of it. But I do want to put an asterisk by it. Um, And I was trying to look it up, but I got distracted with my own story. I think that the, um, the metal beds that I have in the front yard garden, they are one foot five inches. So that's like, I don't know, 18 inches tall or something. 17 inches tall. Hmm? 17 12 plus 5 is 17 yeah okay 17 inches tall well maybe it's one foot and six inches we <laughs> go ahead and fudge those numbers real quick um and it didn't occur to me until this year because the newest bed that i did through expansions so the two beds that i um built basically in between the metal beds mm-hmm. are much lower they're ground level basically Right, And it took me a long while this year to figure out why I wasn't having as much success in those beds. There's a couple other things, kind of this this fresh soil that's a bit compacted, yada, yada, yada. But there's also a bit of shading that even, forget the vertical part of the growing, the the, uh, beds we're doing even, right? You know, so this is something that's, again, foot and a half up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then once you start to get some growth on those trellises, then it creates more and more shade for that area that's I expanded, right? So would I do it again? Yes. Did I get more out of my garden by doing that? I, be, to be quite honest, I mean, maybe about 5% more for like a, not the full garden, but for like a period of time. I had success in the spring and that's kind of sort of it, yeah. you know? I mean, if you go like if if you go to the, um, the Backyard Gardens TV YouTube channel and you watch any one of my garden tours, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, technically seven trellises in my garden, um, you know, and that's peas, beans, all that good stuff. But you can also move on to like indeterminate tomatoes. You can move on to like squashes. Um, you know, like right now, I'm just shout out my winter squash again. It's 35 feet long. Imagine if I put that on that trellis. And I mean, it does take a little bit of work when it's a non natural trellising plant. But to weave it up and down that, you know, then I would not be taking up any space whatsoever in my yard itself. Now, I don't mind that look. Um, you know, melons and stuff like that, but all those different things, 
you can do with these and you can trellis them and still not really take up that much more space. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, yeah, you're, you're going to have some cost incurred about adding a trellis, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a suggestion right now. You should never go into a box store and buy a pre-made trellis. If you are conscious about money and what, way at all i mean all you need is some wood and you know i use rebar um like concrete mesh that you put under and everyone's like oh it gets rusty but that rust is actually good because it gives the plant something to grip on Mm -hmm. so you know and it's ten dollars for that you know my whole trellis system each trellis system cost me about thirteen dollars you know and they last for years so when you know i've bought Previously, um, I bought some trellises that were pre-made and all that, and they don't, they don't last. They're just they're junk, they're garbage. And you can even go back. Um, I was it's funny. I was looking in some of my older videos, and I could see how my gardens changed over the years. And there was my original trellis was just that. You know, there was one trellis, and then there was another one added, and another one. And as as the gardens grown and ultimately maxed out. <clears throat> excuse me then you know we're finding different ways to use them and utilize them and i remember when i was going to put in the cattle panel i remember talking to you about it um off the podcast and saying that my only problem i had is i didn't want my garden to look like an erector set mm-hmm. you remember mm-hmm. that i do mm-hmm. so <clears throat> But moving forward, I'm happy that I added all the trellises because it's giving me more options, more space. You know, before the only thing I grew vertical was peas and beans, green beans. Now I've added in black eyed peas and all that stuff. So, yeah, I wouldn't um, wouldn't have grown melons is probably the only thing I would not have grown if I wasn't doing vertical gardening. Yeah. And I'm very pleased to say this year, although it's been a rough year for a, a number of things. Um, sorry, insert episode. Rough year. Uh, the um, I did get two melons as of the recording of this off the plants. Um, and that's a win. You know, yeah. many, many, many cantaloupe, the smallest cantaloupe ever. And then my infamous mango melon. And that's a win, man. Um, I still haven't grown but, a mango melon. Yeah, I I thought I sent you seeds. No, I didn't. I never got seeds from you. Okay, well, we'll get some this year. Yeah, I am your uh, seed saving buddy. So, Uh, but I mean, I think that's a good example of again. If I didn't have vertical gardening, I wouldn't venture out to grow those crops just because I wouldn't want um, the melons to occupy so much more space in my garden. Like it would probably be a good while before I was willing to sacrifice that space. Right. Um to something like, you know, how much space melons need if they're grown traditionally versus uh, vertically. Now, I was talking to my, <clears throat> actually, I was listening to my mom yesterday for quite a while. Um, <laughs> shout out to mothers all over the world. And she grew cantaloupes for the first time this year. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I had one rot on the vine. I'm like, yeah, that happens. She's like, but I got one. She was like, my God, I didn't know that a cantaloupe could taste that good. I'm like, I'm telling you, mom. She was like, I've, I'll have never look at cantaloupes the same way ever again. She's like, the stuff at the store it doesn't even taste like a cantaloupe. And it was the power of that when she said, I mean, dude, it's my mother. You know, now go back any amount of episodes. And I've talked about how my parents grew mm-hmm. vegetables as a kid, but we grew tomatoes peppers Mm -hmm. Uh, basically that's it you know just your really (laughs) super standard basic some squash zucchini you know summer vegetables and now i think she's being influenced by what we're doing and says she's branched out a little bit which she's trying um, brussels sprouts this year and if she gets brussels sprouts i might have to kill my mom Mm -hmm. so there is that i'm just joking i'm joking don't take that sound bite out (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> next episode of 2020 um it, it's it's you know my saying it's like crab meat and imitation crab meat it shouldn't even be allowed to be called imitation crab meat it tastes so different i feel like <clears throat> store-bought cantaloupe and a really good cantaloupe from your garden now um, i haven't eaten the cantaloupe yet um 
and the last year's cantaloupe was just so so better than what I get at any you know uh, breakfast you know continental breakfast or something but not like delicious you know and, and you and I both know that um, the gardener can influence you know the taste of things like that well you know as a former marine biologist um once a marine biologist, always a marine biologist. I do have to tell you that imitation crab meat, um, it's called surimi, is the name of it. And it's actually ground up Pollock. And it makes me physically ill. Um, mm. We were on, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I was out to sea and we were going through a tropical storm. So we had like heavy seas. And the, the chef, for whatever reason, served us all imitation crab meat. And I got seasick, buddy. And it was, we would go up a wave, I'd stand on the deck of the ship and I'd jump and your feet would be 10 feet off the ground. You'd have to like belt yourself in. It was like a game we played. It was super dangerous. Anyway, so I hit the deck and I was like, oh God, here it goes. So I ralphed all over the side of the boat, right? We get to port like two weeks later and all down the side of the boat. It never got washed off. And they're like, who threw up on the side of the boat? I was like, oh no. I was like looking around <laughs> acting stupid, but yeah, it stuff makes you physically ill and it's, <clears throat> it's the same thing. Like it's, you're exactly right. It shouldn't even say crab meat in the name. It should mm-hmm. have, you know, something else. Um, and that's the same thing with these fruits and vegetables. But the reason why I brought it up is because I told her, she's like, well, I don't really want it growing out in my yard. And I was like, well, mom, you know, we can grow it up and save the space. I was like, you're going to have to hammock them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. you know, my butternut squash grew up my um, cattle panel this year and I had a squash grow and, you know, they get pretty heavy and it never broke off. I didn't have to try it find- or anything. Do you find uh hammock? Do you find that butternut squash, the, um, the vines are a bit stronger. I don't know what uh, the stem is. What I the mean, the stem is pretty stout. The stem is, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, a great, great descriptor there you, compared to kind of your soft melons. Yeah, like a melon, I think. And and see, that's where once you grow a vegetable for a couple of years, you start to realize the differences in them. And not all vining vegetables are the same or fruits. So, yeah, the cantaloupe. I was actually filming the stuff I was gonna film the stuff i was gonna harvest and as i walked through the night before i was like wait what? look and it was just sitting there yeah it, it already detached itself and i'm like ah oh, better me than the squirrels yeah. you know <laughs> so i mean vertical gardening is an obvious number i mean there are other things you can do with that there's a <clears throat> go ahead i see you raising just your a hand. real quick note the green beans that i've talked about so much this season um, I use the TP method and those are, you know, the, um, the steaks that you get at yep. any kind of store. I mean, they could be, they could have been sticks, but those steaks, that's what I use. And then I had kind of one tr- very traditional, like big box um, trellis that I bought probably 10 or 12 years ago that I would never buy again. When the beans were just, you know, getting wild and honorary, I put that there. So I said that to say, like, it isn't even like the most proper trellis, even if you're building it. Yeah. You know, because I just didn't realize how much I thought about it. I remember people people talking to you as well about the weight of those bean vines, you know, and I'll do something a little bit stronger next year or have fewer plants. Um, but there are a lot of ways that you could rig up a trellis. There are. For and, the and there's a lot of people that do all kinds of things. I've seen people use like um, uh, refrigerator shelvings and, mm-hmm. you know, wire shelvings, all kinds of stuff. So it just depends on what the, you know, a lot of, and the way I look at the gardening is like, what is the look that you want within your garden as well? I don't want my garden to be trashed up as much. So I don't want those white wire shelves and stuff. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, a little can of spray paint will fix anything too. So there's that, um, <clears throat> you know, project source. That's my buddy right there. Dollar a can hollow. But when you talk about, um, growing vertical and then transitioning to the next method, which I know we kind of discussed early on, but you know, they have things like upside down tomato, containers and stuff like that i've never grown this but i know people that have used them and love them have you heard of them your eyes got really big um yes i've heard of them okay so you know containers is another thing and that there was a little bit of a debate for us between the two of us because technically it is expanding Mm -hmm. right and Mm -hmm. but for me 
the footprint is so minimal and there's so little startup. You know what I mean? Like, I don't find it as much of a expansion as digging a hole, putting in a raised bed, you know, it's plowing the field. Not- it's not as permanent. Right. So one of the things about, so the number of containers I started off with this year was like 60 plus. And I haven't done a count, but I know that I'm growing as of now in less containers because there's some things that once I harvested and, you know, if the plant was done, I just didn't plant in again. But that's one of the, I think, benefits. And that's the reason why I was able to acquiesce and say, all right, fine. Okay, we'll, we'll fold in container gardening here is because I kind of look at the idea of expansion and the costs associated with it and kind of like you're stuck with this forever when you don't have that has, doesn't have to be the way when it comes to containers because you can scale back if you want, you know, um, and the we've talked about um, all types of things you can use, you know, for containers. Yeah. You know, so and I mean, you know, I mean, you know, <clears throat> and some people know that I just moved my entire container garden. Um they were doing, I, 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 re, I, I hesitate to call it a container garden, but I started a few containers this year and the intention was like, Hey, I'm going to put them up against the side of my greenhouse. You know, the first half of the season gets just about the right amount of sun and then it gets more shady. And I had the full intention of moving it eventually. So I moved it to a whole nother section of my yard. And within that video, I mean, I pulled out all of them. Some of them look, like crap some of them looked okay you know a lot of them were a little small they were hurting from the lack of sun i mean now i'm getting eggplants like they're all making peppers one of them didn't make it and if you see the video it'll be a no-brainer which one didn't make it but just by that i can now move it and then moving forward i was like you know what i can actually make a more permanent air quotes permanent setup here and if i don't want to do it then i can just take the dirt out add it to my garden, add it to my compost pile, whatever I want and move on with life. You know what I mean? It's not a permanent setup. And I think that is a good aspect. Not to mention you can add a container here and a container there. You can spread them out a little bit and intermix them on your porches and stuff like that and use space and you can do it tastefully as well. It doesn't have to look like a food factory. Mm -hmm. And um, when we talk about getting more, Right. So I'm probably more inclined to pull crap, crap, pull crops out of. uh, (laughs) You can pull crap. That's okay. uh, That too. Pull crops out of containers than I am like out of the uh, raised bed or something. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm I'm a little bit more deliberate about, okay, yep, we're going to replant something here, you know. And so, I, I mean, that feeds directly into, no pun intended, getting more. Yeah. Right. So one thing I've, you know, I've harvested, I finally pulled that purple cabbage, you know, that was not even the size of my fist by the time it grew. And I looked and I thought about you when I did it, like all of this summer, I could have been doing something different in this particular space. I'm going to make some coleslaw out of that little bitty head. You know? Well, see, <laughs> now you know, and that's the thing. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, it was in a container, right? It was in a container, yeah. So you could take that container and move it around until you found the right spot for it. And I think that's a really powerful part about a container. And for many years, like, truth moment, I don't like containers because of the requirement for watering. But I've seemed to have found spaces for them where there's already going to be in my irrigation process hit because I use timers. I don't hand water. So there are, you know, that aspect's taken care of. So I can move it around as needed. I don't have to worry about weeds as bad. I don't have to worry about um, pests as bad. I still have to worry about pests, but it doesn't seem to be as bad. Um, Mm -hmm. Everything is nice and contained. Mm -hmm. So there is that. Um, So it's just finding that that sweet spot for you and what you want, how you want to add it. And I mean, if you don't have any containers whatsoever, I think you really are missing out on a big part of gardening and a really powerful part because like I said, my eggplant was basically in the shade. I moved it out. And then two weeks later, I've got three eggplants growing on it. Otherwise it would have just been like, okay, well I'm just going to see what this eggplant does and move on, you know? So I, you have that extra, life that you can add to it if you want 
Not to mention, you can set them directly on the ground and the roots will grow into the ground and inevitably give you a stronger plant that you have to water less. I am. Um, I, if we we're going to continue with truth moments, my first attempt at expansion, well, I won't say my first, one of my attempts at expanding my garden has been through containers, right? Um, and what containers do when it comes to getting more is it allows you to experiment as well yeah now i've grown a lot of the same crops in raised beds as well as in containers and generally speaking almost always if it's in a raised bed it performs better and it's primarily the reason you you described there are not a lot of containers that need more root space you know for the things that i grow it really is the consistent watering the nutrients or the lack of one or both right so that's the reason why i believe that performance is better in you know these raised beds for a bell pepper compared to a container um, but i have had success with getting a bell pe- pepper out of a container right um, but it allows you to experiment when it comes to um whether or not I really want to dedicate, you know, my prime garden real estate to a new crop, even a lot of the things that I grew for the very first time, I started off with containers, which with the idea of if it does well, then here it is, it's done well in this space. I can continue to grow it in this container space if I want. Right. You know, and so I don't need to, you know, dig up new space in the garden. Right. And I don't need to do that. I can basically uh, get what I need off of that plant using this container. So, you know, I'm a fan though. Yeah. And you know, for me, the other thing too, is if you practice crop rotation, you literally can move one plant over one pot versus I need to move it to a whole new bed or something like that. And so like, I'm considering, um, for the most part, I may just grow my eggplants in containers only from here on out because they've always done well for me inside of a container. Always have done well for me. I'll look back at that video. My I've continued to have poor uh, success with eggplants in containers. So I'll look back at the video to check out your setup. I mean, it's just a pot with, you know, there's nothing major about it. But yeah, I mean, definitely check it out because... And that one in particular, too, was totally devoid of leaves a month ago. Everything was eaten off of it, and it's bounced back. So, big win there. So, containers are a good thing. And, you know, the other thing I was thinking about, too, and I said it earlier when I was talking about putting it on your porch, but a benefit of containers, you can tuck into other places that you cannot dig in. You know, so, like, when I put it up against the greenhouse, like, there was going to be nothing there at all. But now I made it into a space in which I can have containers set up there. Now, next for next year, I'm not going to do it there. I think I'm, like I said, I'm going to keep them in the blazing heat for the summer. But um, it's an excellent point. There is um, a two foot by four foot, and I said it two foot by four foot little bitty bed that I constructed a couple of years ago. And next to it is probably another foot and a half of space. Yeah. And I have pavers there. And it's a convenient walk space for me to get on the side of that two foot by four foot bed. Yeah, it's the bed is small enough where I could probably just reach in and be fine. But a great example, this is probably the second year. I basically instead of digging up that space and trying to grow in that extra you know, foot and a half of space, I just put containers there. Right. And I could easily slide the container out for the occasion that I need to actually get in because that's it's in, right in front of the space that's in front of my neighbor's fence. Yeah. You know, so I can't get through from the other side. Right. You know, so I've been able to just again to move that container and I move it probably maybe once a month, twice a month. You know, just slide it out, do what I need to do inside of there and slide it back in. Um, but I'm still able to grow something in that space. You know, so it's an excellent point. Yeah. And I mean, the other part of expanding without expanding or getting more is, I mean, and this is where we're going to shout back to the last episode is growing crops that really fit the the high production for low area um, tick marks. You know, I mean, we did last time we talked about multi uses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Let's throw that out the window for this. Let's say, let's not even worry about multi uses. Let's just say, like, hey, your high value, high production crops. I mean, like, I grow a lot of sweet potatoes. It takes a lot of space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, if there was one thing that had to go, 
let me rephrase that. <clears throat> I'm never going to not grow sweet potatoes. I'm growing peanuts. The jury's out, but it's about the jury's coming in to give the verdict real soon. Like they're coming in hot. So once we do this harvest this year, we're going to know like, hey, was this really worth all of the space that I gave it? You know what I mean? Because essentially I could have let a whole bed basically not in theory produce for a whole summer until one harvest at the end of the year. Like we don't know if that's really going to work out right. So we need to know like, Hey, is this going to, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? So <clears throat> that could be on the chopping block because if, if you take that, it's a four by eight bed. So, um, the cattle panel goes into it. So let's take a square foot, uh, four square feet off of it. So that would be 28 square feet of space that I can now grow a multitude of plants in and get more out of next year. Right. Versus waiting an entire season to get a harvest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's and where I don't think it has to go ahead. I don't think it has to be the same thing every single year right you know so once you decide you're going to grow this thing in a container doesn't mean that you need to grow it there forever in a container like year over year <clears throat> you know no but what, no, what i'm saying is like that peanut crop if i didn't plant smartly for that maybe mm. you know i mean what is going to be my measurement of success I don't know. It means it's going to be 10 pounds of peanuts, five pounds. I don't know <laughs> what that answer is. Um, I am a true blue peanut addict. I love them. I love them boiled. I love them peanut butter. I love them roasted, raw, just all across the board. Have you ever had a raw peanut? No, I haven't. Every time you ask me, my answer remains I haven't. Oh, have I asked you before? Because uh, I still haven't. Yeah. My bad, uh, chief. But peanuts are feeling very much like your onions. Stay with me. And your potatoes. In the in light of how uh, reasonably priced they are in stores, you know, and so it's the again, stay with me. It's that moment of like, there's a lot of energy you put into this this year, you know, the thinking about it, the talking about it, the hopefulness, you yeah. know, maybe not so much for the maintaining it, you know, maybe that probably was low maintenance, but it's kind of like, you know, even if you get 10 pounds, geez, you, know, you could go and buy four packages of peanuts at the store. Um, however, However, I got my rebuttal, uh, so I'm hoping you cover it right now. Yeah, yeah. However, uh, I'm growing potatoes next year. I'm growing onions next year. I grew potatoes and onions this year, right? Like it still feeds into that. You have this protein source for you and peanuts, and you're able to grow it on your own. If you don't grow it this year, you don't know what improvements to make to grow it next year and to <clears> exactly. grow more, you know, well, or the year after that and to grow more. You have to think within this bed, too. I did a direct sow portion and I did a, you know, starting on my seed shelf portion. Mm. So this is really the year where I'm going to figure out, like, hey, is this really worth it? <clears throat> this, that, and the other. Um, Patavia sent me a message earlier that said, have a drink, damn it. So every time she talks, I drink water so I don't <laughs> cough or whatever. And I'm swimming right now. But um, <laughs> it's because I love peanuts. It's just like you mm -hmm. and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Like, do you need 50 mm -hmm. plants, uh, tomato plants? No, but you love tomatoes. And I'm growing them because, damn it, I can grow them. And they grow like North Carolina is really popular for growing peanuts. So why not try but you're exactly right. I mean, onions, the same thing. Like I can get a bag of onions for nothing. I mean, but that being said, I need to go back to why did I start gardening in the first place? I started gardening. So when I needed food and the time came and there was no food available, and I know this is dramatic, but this is the way I was thinking back then is I will know how to grow my food. And that's where this kind of falls into that. Like, I want to know how to grow peanuts, mm -hmm. you know, just like mm -hmm. next year, I want to really know how to grow corn and take, get a hold of corn. I know gasp. I'm not really a corn expert, but that's okay. You know, so there's all these things and every, and that's why the garden is so personal for people. The, um, the idea of growing certain crops and getting and with the intention of getting more, you just don't know what's going to be prolific in your garden until you grow yeah. it. Yeah. 
Right. And while the big asterisk is just because it does really, really well for you this year and next year, the year after that doesn't mean it's going to be every year, but it's a pretty good indicator. Right. You know, once you figure that thing out and it's prolific, um, I mean, that's exactly about getting more out of your garden. Now, we talked in the very opening episode of the series, like it's just not quantity we're talking about. Um, But in this moment, it is. And think about if you figured out in two years how to get 50 pounds of peanuts. Yeah. Man, put me on the Christmas list for a peanut package, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and 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 going back to the idea of like, but potatoes are so cheap in the stores and onions are so cheap in the stores and peanuts are so st- like, yeah, they are. But I mean, are you ever going to buy 50 pounds of peanuts? So 50 no. pounds of peanuts cost $114. <clears throat> and you, I mean, I, I know how to use 50 pounds of peanuts. Don't even ask. I, I, I'd figure it out. You know yeah. like, well, so um, when I lived up north, um, you know, living in North Carolina, we boiled peanuts a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to boil some peanuts, but I needed raw peanuts. So I actually ordered a huge sack of peanuts so I could have boiled peanuts while I lived up there. And I mean, everybody looked at me like I was crazy eating them. But when I made them, everybody flocked to them. So there was that. But that being said, like, yeah, if I can get 50 pounds of peanuts, that's a fair amount. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Plus it's easy to save the seed. So there's that. 50 just sounds like, Oh my gosh, it was 50 pounds. That's five pounds is not really going to cut it for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to set a goal for you, but my whole point is that you'd never get to 50 if you don't start with one pound this year. You may not be trying to set a goal, but you did. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking 50. 50 is a magic mm-hmm. number. <laughs> but that being said, every year we're trying something new. My garden's turning into more of a test garden. Mm-hmm. It, especially mm-hmm. this year, it was a lot more of a test garden. So at some point, I do want to get back to where it's like, all right, let me just get back to like normal. Let me just grow what I know is going to be and be very productive. But for right now, this is the, the mode that I'm in. And I, I need to learn about it. You know what I mean? I want to learn and I learn by doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I said this, I've said this over the years and I've not necessarily implemented it and I got to right where you just were. So I've said this over the years, like, let's just dedicate a bed, a single bed. You know, I got 12,498 of them, a single bed. That's a throwback to a way, way old, early, like old school OG episode. Do you know how many comments we got about that too? They're like, how many beds? garden beds does she actually have (laughs) and i would always answer back like two thousand three thousand eight hundred you know it's like whatever i don't know (laughs) but um the intention of having a single bed that would allow me to play around to experiment to try something new and what ended up happening instead is like i sprinkled that all around my garden and there is going back to your point of you know setbacks it's ripe for that right you know so I was heading into the next year and it's like staples. I'm going to be focused on the good things. All of the things that I know I have evidence of doing well, you know, type of crop, variety, placement, planting time. And it just occurred to me that a large part of the joy that I get from gardening is the... I never saw that before. I never... uh, This is the first time I've seen like this. So I do need to actually keep that in mind and still focus on that this is this new space right like i don't know i'll have to look into growing peanuts i think it could be really really cool to harvest some peanuts we're gonna find out real (laughs) soon and i'm gonna put that right on youtube and you're gonna see it's either i'm either gonna smile or i'm gonna cry one of the two but getting more out of your garden could also be achieved through experimenting a bit yeah yeah and i mean i think if you, it's, it's just like I said, my parents always grew the same things. And mm-hmm. now moving on, they've not only rekindled their love for it, but they've expanded their horizons basically just simply by trying new crops. And I think it's just like with anything in life, I, I would, I would suggest like, don't get yourself into a rut, especially when it mm-hmm. comes to like gardening. And I mean, it's okay to find your certain varieties, but. You know, each year try something because a lot of plants 
like I don't know. For me, it seems like the plants that I try to grow take up a lot of space, but not everything takes up a lot of space. There's a different kind of green you can grow. There's you know spinach or something. You know something that you just don't really know about. Which spinach doesn't fall into the category of high um, productivity for small space, but yeah. there is that. So I mean, I don't know. I think it's it's a good part of it because I mean, if you combine vertical adding some containers and then let's call it planting smartly. Maybe does that sound good? I think I that, like it. Yeah. I think you would be, um, smart planting. Let's do it that way. Smart planting. I think you would find that you are going to get more out of your garden with little, um, monetary cost or even extra effort. Right. Yeah. For, for, those of us who have had gardens over the years, we got a lot of the formula figured out. We just don't necessarily realize it. Right? Yeah. I, I swear I don't have the formula figured out. I wish I did. I said a lot of it. I didn't say all of it. You know? <laughs> yeah. We're out here like it's a beautiful mind. Yeah. Um, Russell Crowe in it. Um, so, or I can't think of the real guy's name. Um, I, Nash. Um, I, I, bring it up because we go into each year saying okay this is going to be you know let's see what the garden year brings us and some of it we don't control like changes in our weather we don't control right um you know bringing bad elements whether it's soil or something else into the garden we don't control illness we don't control right uh, but beyond those things which are pretty big but beyond those things there is a lot that we do control like um my neighbor i don't want it's been a while i don't want to uh one of her daughters she sent me a picture and said i hope you don't mind I just saw this. So it's a picture of one of her daughters and the second daughter is taking a picture of the first daughter posing in front of like on an angle in front of my yard. Like it's remember, did you remember they, it was a tree and they were doing that at Hobby Lobby going in and having a whole photo shoot. Yeah. And so she basically is using my, the backdrop of my front yard as a photo shoot, right? It was her birthday. And I'm talking, I mean, I was a glass, a glass and a half of wine in, but <laughs> uh, I get teary eyed just thinking about it. She's like, I hope you don't mind. Cause you know, that I mean, she's pretty old school to my man. So I'm like, absolutely not. This makes me so happy. And I look at it's a lot of it. It's the sunflowers, right? You know, and it's like, I figured that game out, man. Like, you know, like there's no like question mark around it anymore. Like I got that. Like I can go into it next year and just decide how many I want to plant or yeah. not, you know. Um, so that's what I mean about there's a lot that we did figure out. When I was talking to my good girlfriend yesterday, she said, so separate instances, though, she said, um, how do you know all of this? Like as I was talking about different things and I'm like, you know. It's just the years of like pouring that information into your head. A lot of it falls out, but some of it sticks, you know, and so. All of that to say, um, a lot of us already know how to get more out of our gardens. It's just either going back to it or giving up maybe something else. Yeah. And going forward with it, you know. Repetition is the key to success. Only maybe. problem is with gardening, repetition is years and years and years. <laughs> mm -hmm. But on that note, I have to give you a very special edible and cannibal Recipe of the day. Okay, so this is not only going to be a recipe, but it's going to lead us into my final suggestion about expanding whatever. So, and Batavia sent me a thing. She said, cannibal? Like, no, we're not eating people, okay? We're going to keep it nice and clean, even though Halloween's around the corner and all that. I don't know what it says about me that when I heard it, that's exactly how I processed it versus something that you can can. Given all that we talk about, you'd think that'd be the first thought. Because but. cannibalism is extremely fascinating, but that's a different story. Mm, okay. So um, it's that time of year, everybody. It's fall. If you are blessed, like I used to be, to live somewhere where you can pick apples or you grow apples... Then we're going to make applesauce and then we're going to can it. So <clears throat> it's really simple. It's um, six pounds of apples. You peel them and core them. 
You need um, some cinnamon if you even like cinnamon in it. So there's that. And if you if you want, you can add sugar to it. We eat unsweetened applesauce all the time, so there's that. Um, we're going to th- put apples, water, and cinnamon, and sugar, if you want, into a saucepan or a crock pot. Bring it to a boil and simmer for 20 minutes, or if you put it in the crock pot, you put it on low for four hours. Now, remember, this is also, if you go even longer, you can make apple butter. So, um, I'll tell you a story about apple butter in a minute. So, you, then you're going to puree it until it's as smooth as you would like. So, I like mine a little chunky, if you know what I'm saying. So, you can do that. Uh, you put it into pint jars. If you want to can it, you add a tablespoon of lemon juice to each pint. <clears throat> and then two tablespoons to each quart. And then you put it into the hot jars. You leave a half inch of headspace, um, all that good stuff. And then you process it in boiling water for 20 minutes for a pint or 25 minutes for a quart. It's super easy. Um, the apple butter portion I was going to tell you about, I don't remember the recipe because we made it one time and it turned into concrete in our crock pot. And it took us, I'm not lying, one month of scrubbing it every night to get it out of our crock pot. So um, there's that. But it's really easy. Uh, a lot of people go apple picking, and we were always the odd ones where we'd walk out with like five or six bushels. So if you go apple picking, like go deep. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like a, <laughs> like especially up in New England, that's like a beloved fall um, task tradition. or tradition. Yes, yeah. tradition. Thank you. So how do you all use it? Apple but- applesauce. No apple butter. Oh, apple butter. Well, I didn't give the recipe for apple butter, so there's that. Well, but yeah, if, I mean, I just put it on bread or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, we make different cakes and stuff, and we'd use it as like filling. Same thing as like a jelly or a jam. Mm-hmm. Apple butter is really that, good. If you if you eat ham or turkey, especially coming up on some of the U.S. holidays, it can make for a or you know any holidays that have a ham or a turkey, it could make for a, a good um, spread on a sandwich, turkey sandwich, ham sandwich, something like that. Oh, uh, well, you know, when I was a kid, my grandmother, she made, um, she made really good macaroni and cheese, but she would always cook dinner the day before. Mm-hmm. And then we'd go over there and it, it was always cold as hell. Like you'd sit down and you'd just be like, damn. She so didn't he- it, reheat it? Look, I don't know. No. Yeah. It was yeah. like a thing in our family. God rest her soul. She tried and she cooked. It was like it's room spread. temperature. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat it, you know, and everybody, you know, it was good as hell the day before, but nobody ever got it. But we ate the applesauce with the macaroni and cheese. And that's become like a big thing for me is you like rub your macaroni and cheese and your applesauce. Mm. It's really good. <laughs> so um, I don't like I said, I don't put sugar in it, but it's really easy and it's a good snack for kids and stuff like that. Um, so give it a shot. And I don't put cinnamon in mine either because it limits it. Because what we do with our applesauce too is we use it in our baking to replace oil. So it's a, mm-hmm. it eliminates the fat inside of your baking and it'll make it more moist. So there's that. So okay. that gave me an afterthought too. And it brought me into my garden just to kind of wrap up this whole episode. And usually we don't really, well, lately we haven't really brought up topics after the recipe, but this was kind of an afterthought and that's putting in a fruit tree. You can add a lot of poundage to adding in a fruit tree if you have space or something like that. So um, I put in a peach tree last fall and I got, I don't know, like 50 peaches off. I can't remember the final count. I canned six or seven jars of peaches. And that was only off one year's growth. So, you know, that's another option you can do. It can change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Apples. You can grow your own apples, too. That's really popular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and apples is prob- they're probably one of the, I'm going to say, so widely used when it comes to going back to last week's episode, being versatile multi-use you know fruit yeah well look ain't nothing better than a good old american apple pie (laughs) i mean there is that so which i am excited for apple pie season good night i'm gonna have to get the missus on here to give y'all her apple pie recipe oh that'd be great a guest spot for uh yeah man gosh my grandfather that was his absolute favorite pie and i can make a pretty good apple pie but um 
Yeah, yeah, I can. I mean, I'm not a, like I'm not like Mrs. Gardner when it comes to being the baker. But I she's given you baking pie. directions before, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Listen, it's I'm taking depth. them every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking them every time. They're like, hold on, like yeah. we're recording it, pressing pause, rewinding. Yeah. It. <laughs> for my uh, for my birthday, she made me a mounds cake. So like the mounds bar, but a cake. Does it doesn't have coconut in it? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was real good. I think I'm when we get done here, I'm gonna go eat the last piece, and I'm not sharing it with mm-hmm. anybody because damn it, it's mine. But um, I used to hate coconuts. I just, they make you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when I was a kid, I lived in a, um, <clears throat> I lived in a town, and r- I lived exe- right next door to a convenience store, and I didn't ever think it was weird. But I used to call it the Mounds Store. So I would go over there every day and get a Mounds Bar. This is back when you thought candy was good for you. You know, there was nobody thought that it was bad for you, and I didn't realize that it had dark chocolate in it. My mom always said that I was really weird for doing that. She never knew a kid that did that. So <laughs> we go deep with Mounds Bars in my in my blood so um but i hope this has helped everybody to you know instead of sticking the shovel in the ground maybe you can work around that and get more out of your garden yes batavia i'm listening to this audio book which i'm not going to plug just yet gotta get to the end of it um but one of the comments earlier on is um you know, a lot of us have dreams of, you know, having this big land, this big plot, you know, and being able to, to grow all of the things, you know, and the comment went something like, but are you getting the most you can get out of your backyard garden today? Yeah. And I was just like, you don't have to talk to me that way. Yeah. That's an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it really clearly, you know, it resonated, you know, and it's like you, you got to you got to work what you have right now and be, you know, you don't have to, but it's wise to work what you have. Um, and the hope is that it's going to be a shock once you get to that kind of dream space of yours, because you're going to be able to take a lot of what you know and experience forward. But I mean, it's going to be a different world for you. But I'd rather look back and say, I got every bit that I could out of the space I just came from or sitting in the space now knowing I got every bit out of it. And that's, again, one of the goals for 2023. And that doesn't mean every inch of the the, the uh, yards are planted in, but it's walking away from the season feeling really good about what your plan was, how you executed it, you know, how you dealt with challenges and to be able to say, like, at the end of 2023, I got more out of my garden. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, I think for me, having a piece of land, let's say I, I bought a piece of land, three acres, I was calling it an eight, three acres, mm-hmm. wide open, perfect for gardening, is my worst nightmare. I need to have constraints built within where I am to limit what I'm doing and also challenge me. So if I lived in a field, like it wouldn't be as much of a challenge for me. You know what I mean? Like, that's just something that I thrive off of. Um, And a lot of times it causes me to fail in certain aspects. But that would not be my cup of tea is just to have like this wide open space where I could grow whatever I wanted. I think I would be in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd be broke. I can tell you that. So (laughs) there's that. But um Help us buy some chewing gum, everybody. Check out the links below. Check us out on Patreon, all that good stuff. And be safe out there, everybody. Don't be like me and get COVID. Wear a mask. And until next time. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month.
Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.